Yep. Like, subscribe, and comment. That's right. Everybody, this is Cody James, the Barker from the NWA, also the leader of Cody Country. You are watching Call TV. Follow these guys on all their socials. Click, like, subscribe, share, and give these guys the respect that they give to you in content. Oh, greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pro Wrestling 60. I'm XLJ, the OG, joined by my partner in crime, my brother from another mother this week, hailing from Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, where Cactus Jack is, one Mr. B-Row. Sounds good, you know. Murder's legal here. Oh, and Truth or Consequences? Yeah. I'm wanting to know the day. When are you going to come from Parts Unknown? Because I've always wanted to visit Parts Unknown. I hear it's the loveliest time of year. I, um, just, I would come visit you in Parts Unknown. Uh, maybe Christmas vacation? Mm, Christmas in Parts Unknown. Okay. Sounds kind of like a horror movie or a porno. What, whatever. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, we... It's been another crazy week in the world of professional wrestling. we got so much to talk about. And... So little time to get to it. So, Mr. B-Roll, would you mind hitting us yes. that beautiful sweet line? Yes, we're we're already off to such a such a great start. Um, <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, I'm, I'm so coming. Mad. I'm coming. I'm coming off of the. I'm coming off of the uh, cold cast episode. Uh, uh, that's like exactly did, what I'm. So. That's exactly what I'm thinking about. I'm like, man, that sounds like something they talked about on cold cast. And if you know. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. All right, composure. Gather, gather myself. All right, I am Mr. B Roll. He is XMLJ. This is PW60, where we try to sum up the week of professional wrestling in 60 minutes or less. And I say the clock starts now. All right, and our top story this week it was Grand Slam week. For all elite wrestling, as they were back at it again in Arthur Ashe Stadium course they had grand slam dynamite as well as grand slam collision uh this time which i think is the first year they've done a, a grand slam collision so but let's get right into it we'll talk about dynamite first and foremost and of course as you all know the match i was the most hyped and excited to see out of all this is a match a once in a lifetime never thought we would see again matchup nigel mcginnis against brian danielson and I got to tell you, B-Roll, I absolutely love this matchup. Uh, was it as good as their other encounters? I mean, come on, man. I mean, that was like, you're talking about 15, 20 years ago. But this was a damn solid, great technical wrestling matchup for sure. I love just seeing Nigel just get his get his uh, moment, you know, there and Arthur Ashe and stuff and going up against Danielson one last time. As we know, Danielson's probably going to retire here real soon. Uh, everything about this I love. What do you think of this um, encounter between Danielson and McGinnis? Yes, I. Uh, this was this was a great match. I mean, to me, it delivered exactly what I thought it would. Right um, mm -hmm. now, these two men obviously they are much older than they were during their classic rivalry, right? But you know, it still delivered. Now, what I will say, what I think was crazy, but like crazy in the kind of way that like i'm here for it this opened the show yeah now i gotta be honest i was a little dissatisfied with that because like i was just getting barely in to tune in to dynamite i was like oh shit we're already doing this this is like the one thing i want to see the most but um great way to kick off the show nonetheless but uh man i just everything about i love how they threw back to like some of the stuff of their matches of old you know uh and 
kudos to to Nigel McGinnis. This is his first real singles match, I think, in maybe what fifteen plus years or something like that. So it was an amazing counter. It was awesome, and of course, you know, it had to be our match of the week this week on PW60. And this right here, the finish of it with Nigel saying thank you. Like if that doesn't bring a tear to your eye, folks, I don't know what will. Uh, but this match was awesome. Loved every bit of it. And I hope hope this is a resurgent for Nigel. Um, you know, we've got Sack Sabre Jr. calling him out for Wrestle Dynasty, so who knows? Um, but I hope we get to see Nigel McGinnis in the ring very, very soon once again. But we know we're going to see Brian Danielson at um, Wrestle Dream, and we now know who his opponent is going to be because, yes, John Moxley did defeat Darby Allen for that number one contendership and now will go into Wrestle Dream in Brian Danielson's hometown, or his home state, I should say, uh, to go up and challenge for the AEW championship. Man, I mean, the man tried to unalive him with, like, a, a grocery store bag. What links do you think John Mox is going to go to to make sure that he puts Brian Danielson into the title? Man, as as the as as the good old Jr. put it, a, a GD plastic bag. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I, I I'm I the words are hard. Um, I'm excited for this. Um, I was reminded of when um, actually it was I think it was around maybe Grand Slam time. When Brian and Mox, both members of the Blackpool Combat Club at the time, they met in the finals of that tournament um, to become the the, the I, I can't remember if it was new champion or interim champion. I I, I, I guess remember. interim champion, yeah, because Punk was got hurt or whatever, yeah. But would this be the, technically their third time meeting because they met at Revolution and they met that time? I think in AEW, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, it's two of the best wrestlers in the world, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great matchup. Uh, I think a lot of us was kind of thinking Darby was going to be the one uh, to go over and become the next AEW champion, and how appropriate would it be in uh, Washington? But um a lot there's a couple things there's uh, that can happen between now and then of course um i do think at some point darby is that guy i just don't think it happens at wrestle dream but um i mean it's gonna be a, a hell of a matchup no i don't think moxley i don't think moxley does i think it'll be a tremendous matchup but i don't see moxley beating danielson uh at least i hope he does it nothing against john moxley or anything but i mean yeah um I, I look for Danielson to to retain because um, I do think like when when that time comes, it's going to be to a younger talent. It's going to be a beneficiary for them, and I think Darby Allen is the guy. It's just not going to happen apparently at uh, re- at uh, Wrestle Dream. So, but still, nonetheless, it's going to be a hell of a matchup. And I also wonder too, what's going to Darby do now uh, there? I mean, it's his home state. He's got to be on the card, right? Or hell, who knows? Maybe they may get a triple threat or something. You never know. But this was a tremendous matchup. But man, oh man, this was a big moment too. As Prince Nana was given an update on Swerve Strickland. Who comes out? It is one (laughs) Montel Fontavious Porter. MVP is all elite. Coming out just looking fly as ever. Got that cane and kind of putting Prince Nana, blasting him and putting him on notice, man. Uh, you think MVP is uh, making a serious play here for the managerial services of one Swerve Strickland? It appears uh, quite, like that's what it is. Quite possibly. And then ultimately I expect for Swerve to turn him down. And then I expect maybe like some debuts. And then we have this uh, rivalry coming. And But yeah. Yeah. But MVP is all elite, and I would think some members of perhaps a certain business may be yes, showing uh, up soon in AEW. I, I I would assume maybe one or two. Uh, I mm-hmm. MVP. 
MVP did not come alone. I, I can see yeah. that. Yeah, let's let's just say that. There's no way that MVP is alone, but uh, this was the big surprise. The big Your big uh, cameo, if you will, from Dynamite was MVP showing up in AEW, and it was pretty awesome to see, nonetheless. Well, let's talk about the rest of Dynamite uh, from Arthur Ashe Stadium, as it was a tremendous card. Uh, I know the match you want to talk about. How about the tag team title matchup with the Young Bucks defending against Will Ospreay and Kyle Fletcher? Uh, I know, it, like, it was yeah. pretty awesome. It, it was, was pretty, pretty solid. Awesome. Yeah, I I wasn't expecting anything out of it, but man, it was a damn good show. Another classic Will Osprey matchup. The Bucks looked great. Kyle Fletcher looked awesome, and it told the story too. You know, we got this kind of some, uh, you know, dissension sort of between Fletcher and uh, Osprey. So it seems like, of course, with Don Callis and getting involved, it's, so. It's that darn Don Callis. That damn Don Callis. Uh, also, we got to see Hook um, successfully retain his FTW championship against Roderick Strong. And, and have an emotional retire. moment there. Retire the FTW title and give it back to his old man, Taz, which I think is a smart move. Uh, nothing against the FTW title, but I feel like it was kind of hindering and taking down um, uh, Hook. Honestly, it was just kind of like just pigeonhole him into just one role. So now I think this will help him advance his career. Um, so I think that was a smart move to do. Um, it worked for what it was at the time, but I think he'd really outgrown the title. So I think it was smart how they did that. Uh, yeah. Also, Ma Mariah May retaining her AEW Women's Championship against Yuka Sakasaki. And we got a reunion with with Mina Shirakara. You know, you know, I love seeing that B-roll. I I know you do. I know you do <laughs> indeed. But I tell you what, I'm more excited for. Uh, kind of seems like maybe Willow might. Yeah, be in yeah. A feud. Like, yeah. So it looks like she's going to be the next challenger. My only concern with that, though, is the fact that it's like, well, okay, it's obvious we know who's going to win this. But uh, other than that, you know, I'm I'm excited. I'm on board for it. So. Um, yeah, well, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, Willow, Willow's had a an amazing year so far. So. Well, let's talk about Collision this past week, which was also from Arthur Ashe Stadium. And in the main event, one Kasuchika Okada uh, did defeat uh, Sammy Guevara. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, B-Roll, but this was like a one of the, the stupid qualifiers, right? It wasn't like actually for the title, or was it actually for the Continental title? I, I, I do believe it was one of those stupid qualifiers, because... Yeah. You know. Well, nonetheless, Sammy Guevara didn't win. So, um, but I mean, you know what? I gotta say, uh, it was a tremendous matchup. I I thoroughly enjoyed it a lot more than I thought it would. And you know, nothing against Sammy. You know my thoughts on Sammy. He just doesn't do it for me. But uh, this was a tremendous this was a tremendous matchup. A great way to close out a uh, Grand Slam week. I think it was Okada and Guevara. Uh, but in my opinion, I don't think that was the best match on the show. I'll tell you the one that really surprised me that I was invested in. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett and Hangman Page in the Lumberjack Strap Match. Uh, I, I did got, not have this on my two, bingo card. I got two words for you. Yeah? Juice Robinson. Oh, dear God, yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> the lumber Like, <laughs> the Juice was loose as a, in this matchup. But no, uh, seriously. If you would have told me I would be cheering for Jeff Jarrett on Dynamite, one of the biggest Dynamites of the year, or I'm sorry, on Collision, I should say, on one of the biggest collisions of the year uh, against Hangman Page, I would be like, nope. And and by the way, Jarrett's working as a babyface. That was not on my bingo card for 2024 this year. Yeah. If you were to tell me multiple people would be behind Jeff Jarrett, I'd be like, you crazy. You crazy. Right? You crazy. Yeah, but um, this was a really good matchup, though. It was a solid a solid matchup. Of course, Hangman did pick up the win, but uh, this was a great matchup. But, but I love seeing Murder Grandpa up here. As, yes, one Minoru Suzuki answered the challenge of one Jungle Jack Perry. Uh, I guess I can't call him that anymore. Scapegoat Jack Perry. Had like a JR moment there for a second. Um, but... Man, Jack Perry is just looking better and better, more badass. Like, like you see what he did to Suzuki at the end of this matchup, man? It's like, uh, he, I mean, doing that against Minero freaking Suzuki, Murder Grandpa, Jack Perry, 
whipping his ass. Like that's another one I didn't have on my bingo card for this year as well, man. Like so, uh just crazy. So a few things. One, love murder grandpa. You know love, him. love love the entrance, you know. I aspire you know. to do karaoke with him one day. Yes, yes, yes indeed. Um but one love the like video packaging with the bus and the you know yeah like, that's... heading to the, yeah yeah i'm i am i am loving that um and then also shibata coming out at the end of this match oh yeah so Looking like am... shibata may be getting a shot against uh jack perry i i am here for here for that as well yeah but I, I just I've been very impressed with this Jack Perry run since he's came back as the scapegoat. I think he's he's doing really great things and um really like I think now, in my opinion, there is a, a valid argument for him to say he is one of the pillars. Um yeah, you can argue think... on that all day. But I mean this this has been this has been the Jack Perry we've needed to see um since he came back. Yeah, I think even Darby maybe said it in a recent interview or something like, you know, the Jungle Boy th- Jungle Boy thing was great and all, but it was it was never gonna last. Nope. Um, and then like when he came back, it turned heel and was like kind of like the Hollywood. I don't know. I think he said like he feels like now it's more like he's more of like in true self. It's true I self. I agree. It's I agree kind of like that. A, an insult without it being an insult, <laughs> but like, you know, a bad situation no, happened and a, he took the ball and ran with it. So yeah, there you go. That's well, the best way you can have it. Now he's going over on Minoru Suzuki and kicking his ass. Who would have thunk it? But this was probably my favorite match of the night. I would say between this and that strap match, we had Soraya go up against Jamie Hader in a Soraya's rules match, which is pretty much Soraya could do whatever fuck she wants. But it didn't there, matter because Jamie Hader. There are Hader, no rules. That's yeah. that's what it was. There there are no rules. But you know what? It didn't matter because Jamie Hader whipped that ass as she got I love a big the VCR. Win. Like uh, right? Where did I they had get to a have that in there? VCR. Like... <laughs> it's like crazy. It's like I, I love I love how the announcers are trying to explain what this is because I'm sure people at home are like the kids are like, huh? What's that? Now kids. Now kids. VCR, we used to have to watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> watch stuff on this and then rewind it. What? <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, I love this. I'm so, I know we've talked about it before. So happy Jamie's back. Uh, and I can't wait to see uh, where she goes from here now that I, I think maybe this feud's kind of over with Soraya. Uh, are, are we moving on, you think? Are we moving I, on? I hope so. I kind of think so. Uh, I also want to say this too on this end. I think this is some, something Soraya needed desperately too, because I feel she's been very stagnant for a little while. Um, so hopefully both of them can kind of go off and dominate and do their own thing in the women's division in all elite wrestling. But time will tell what happens there. Let's talk about the rest of Collision. Um, we got the Tornado Six Man Tag with the conglomeration against the Learning Tree. It happened. <laughs> um yeah. yeah yeah i mean eh, yeah. it it was a thing i just brody, I, king, I, brody king murdered bro- action and dread brody, brody king murdered that man uh, uh oh, li lij is back back yeah how about that man looking good or, too. not lij not lij that'd be day hope <laughs> but no it's still lij that's i think oh. that's what they're calling him yeah, because there's Los Ingobernales, or you're right, Los Los Ingobernales, L-I. So, um, yeah. yeah, letters but, are hard right now. <laughs> what I really want to talk about, M and M Collections, mm-hmm. Fashion Week. That fashion show, oh my gosh. I gotta say this, daddy ass, man, he is ripped to fucking shit, dude. Like, I didn't even recognize him. Like, I was seriously thinking, okay, they got in some, like, uh, model or something, and then we took the mask off. Like, oh, yeah, that is Billy Gunn. It's like... Look at those thighs. <laughs> right? He's out here slaying, man. So, uh, out yeah. Out here the, hammerstone it, uh, Out here hammerstone. He'd give hammerstone a run for his money. That's their damn sure shit. Uh, also, we got to see um, the uh, trios, ta- trios championships was retained by 
Claudio Pock and uh, Wheeler as they defeated Private Party and Commander. And a little dissension there with Wheeler, a little like he's, you know, he's kind of he's kind of concerned, kind of like, eh, I don't know what I'm going to do here, you know? So, But then he uh, went crazy. And then he went but crazy. Then he left. And he left, so there we go. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Grand Slam week was, in fact, a Grand Slam home run for AEW. And it just so happens, you know, one of our good friends here at the show is who is a AEW diehard. This best gout machine uh, had some takeaways from uh, this past week with AEW. Um, there was something really big that happened uh, on All Elite Wrestling this week that he wanted to talk to us about personally. So that being said, let's go to the best gout machine. P-Dub City, after all these years of doing the PW60 segments on here, educating the masses, keeping the folks entertained, and just, just all around being one of the greatest human beings on the planet, I saw the second greatest human being on the planet, Shania Twain! Yes, Shania Twain! Was in a commercial during AW Dynamite for the Country Music People's Choice Awards. And who else was there? Why, it's former AWTNT champion Cody Rhodes with his wife, possibly one of the greatest women's wrestlers of all time. Ah, uh, yes, it's amazing how I've been covering Shania Twain this entire time. And then Shania Twain makes her way onto AW television. She was there at the same time. I think it was, I think it was picture in picture, but God, you know, I think I'm responsible for that. Tony Khan reached out, saw my sweet ass, and was like, let me touch this man. I want to touch the gout here and maybe a couple other places. You know, it's crazy. I haven't been interrupted yet by any of those, uh, you know, the gout You know, I think uh, right now it's going to cool down. Everything's good. No, nothing to worry about. Yeah, like not a single weird thing going on. Soon, they will be only one. <laughs> Calm down, folks. I hate you, Nia Twain. So, someone walking around my house? Well, I've seen enough horror movies to know this ends disastrously. So, you know what? I'm just going to go to bed. Get my little jack cartwheel. Head <laughs> off to dreamland. <sighs> Oh, gosh, I hope Gout's okay, man. Well, thank you so much for that report. And Oh, ah, I see you got some shades there. Well, how app a pro, because you know what we're talking about next here on PW60. Let's yeet, yeet, yeet it up, because, yes, we have a new Intercontinental Champion. Main event, Jay Uso finally has done it as he defeated Braun Breaker this past Monday night on Raw to win that IC Championship. A huge moment for his career. We've been all clamoring. We've all been waiting for this. Uh, how did you feel about uh, Jay Uso dethroning Braun Breaker? Because i got to be honest, I didn't think it was going to happen. I thought they were going to give Braun a little bit of a longer IC title run. You know, I, I, I've just got to put it this way. Because I agree. I thought Braun would maybe get a longer run. But, you know, it was long overdue for Jay Uso to have a singles title. And I just got to say this. It's just me, Os. Day one, it's just me, Os. And of course, you know, of course, the main event, Jey Uso, was going to be our wrestler of the week here on PW60. We could wish him congratulations. So happy. Just a, a great moment this past Monday night, seeing Jey Uso finally win his first singles championship. And how appropriate. It's the Intercontinental Championship, a championship that his own father held as well as uh, several members of his family so it's pretty cool that he can stake claim and now add his name to that list of great intercontinental champions but awesome moment man long overdue and and i'll say this i hope this is not a transitional or a short-lived championship run for him i hope he gets a long long title run because this man deserves it and then so so well, let's talk about the rest of Monday Night Raw. And man, I'm telling you, this stuff with uh, Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed getting out of hand as uh, there was about to be a matchup. Of course, Braun Strowman comes down to interrupt the matchup between him and the Miz, or I'm sorry, between Bronson Reed and the Miz. And 
We do find out we're getting a last man standing match, I believe, tonight on Raw between those two. So, damn, batting down the hatches because that's going to be some big meaty men slapping meat. Um, also, too, man, continuing on with this this kind of uh, dissension with the New Day, you know, as uh, as the New Day did uh, lose to American Made. And, you know, they're getting ready to come up on their 10-year anniversary, but B-roll, I don't know. I mean, this could Are be the end of the it? New Are they going to make it? So... Uh, it's just crazy to say, but um, yeah, that has been a very compelling story going over on Monday Night Raw. Of course, we also got to see Sami Zayn go up against Ludwig Kaiser. Um, and how about finding out that old Dirty Dom is going to be in a shark cage at Bad Blood when Liv and Rhea go one-on-one -on -one for the uh, Women's Championship? Interesting stuff. Uh, and of course, also, uh, you had the... Uh, Damage Control was in action going up against the Unholy Union as they are continuing to stake their claim as the uh, next challengers in line for the Tag Team Championship, the Women's Tag Team Championship. But uh, Monday Night Raw, man, solid show once again. But let's talk about Friday night. Let's talk about SmackDown. We got to start off first with talking about we got a new number one contender for Nia Jax's championship as Bailey did defeat Naomi. And by the way, I just have to say with Naomi, her gear, the Uno gear, was sick on <laughs> yeah, SmackDown. Was awesome. I love that. Of course, Misha picking up a win against Piper Niven as she prepares for her uh, dumpster, dumpster match. match this upcoming week on Friday Night SmackDown. Uh, but we got to talk about it, man. The big one, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton going up against the Bloodline. And man, KO kind of kind of snapping. He's kind of over Cody Rhodes, it looks like. So... Uh, I think he's finally reached a bowling point. Could we finally be seeing, seeing the heel Kevin Owens that we so desire to see? Uh, uh, I think it's coming. I, I think it'll I be think here before you coming. know, it, my friend. And I think we're already we're already sowing seeds for mm -hmm. Randy and Cody. Mm -hmm. We're sowing seeds. Yes. What, what, what did Randy say to Cody? Cody, it's not a problem. Unless you make it a problem. Yeah, so here we are. And also, uh, Camarlo Hayes and Andrade picking up their series once again, as we now pretty much have a best-of-seven series out of this, which I absolutely love. So throw back to so many great best-of-seven series in wrestling before. So, But SmackDown, solid show. Both, both brands delivering it. But as we said before, we are on the way to Bad Blood, which is coming up this Saturday, which, special reminder, uh a early start time, which I love. Uh, six o'clock Eastern. Uh, thank you, Papa Con. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and also thank you, UFC, because I believe that's why they're doing it. I think UFC's running the show that night, too. So yeah. um, thank you, but TKO. I just, gotta, <laughs> I, I just gotta say, you gotta look closely at the Rhea and Liv match card. Yeah, look, there's the shark right. cage. It's right there. And it's Dom's there. in it. <laughs> oh, Dom is in it. That's so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we know that matchup will take place. Of course, the long-awaited Finn Balor, Damian Priest matchup. Uh, we'd mentioned it earlier. A return match from SummerSlam as Bailey will challenge for uh, Nia Jax's Women's Championship, and we've got this crazy-ass tag team matchup with uh, Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes teaming up and a once-in-a-lifetime encounter as they're going to go up against the Bloodline, Solo Sokoa, and Jacob Batu. A lot of people arguing internally that that should be the main event, but I honestly think it's got to be this one because I think this is the end of the rivalry. It's finally going to happen. Hell in a cell. CM Punk, Drew McIntyre. I think this is going to be an awesome Hell in a Cell matchup, something we haven't seen in a long time, a good, solid Hell in a Cell matchup. Uh, and like I say, it's, I think it's going to end the rivalry finally between these two. Um and I'm here for it. I'm excited to see it. I personally, I hope that does go on as the main event because if it opens the show, it's going to be like, well, top that. But yeah, hard to believe. No. Can you believe Bad Blood is this Saturday? It's crazy. No, it, it, it is so hard to believe, but it, it starts the like a, a trickle of weekends where we have pay-per-views to, mm -hmm. to talk about. So yeah. never, never a bad never. time to be a wrestling fan. You're damn right. <laughs> Well, my friend, it's that time in the show. We need to spice things up a bit. So let's go to Spicy Guac with a spicy tank. Yeah, actually, not so ah! Guac. Yeah. 
It's a funny word, right? Guac, 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 guac. Guac? Yeah. Uh, super crazy. That is spicy guac's <laughs> favorite wrestler. You have me, you no selling bastard. Ah! All of his ECW stuff. Even when he was in the Mexicals. Yeah. So good. So good. A little spicy taking the big spicy. You love it. Uh, well, let's talk about NXT this past uh, week, as this was the last uh, NXT on the USA Network. It's all great wow. things that's come to I know, because we're debuting tomorrow night on the CW. It will be a tremendous show. Uh, but this was a great show as a, as a go-home show for that show. Um, we got to see Kalani Jordan kick off the show with a successful North American title defense against Red and Sinclair. Um, you love that. I just, I, B-Roll, I just don't get it. Like, no person. Uh, anyways, don't get me started. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ridge uh, Holiday continuing his rivalry with Chase Hughes as he went up against um, Riley. Um, I was drawing a blank here. Osborne. Riley Osborne. Yeah, Riley Osborne. Yeah. Um, that was a tremendous matchup. Dude, though, what about the freaking um, uh, Sacri Wentz Wes Lee segment? That was fucking going hard, man. Like, whew, gave me goosebumps. I'm ready to see that matchup on uh, the debut on the CW, man. That's going to be intense. Oh, man. Uh, also, so happy to see Rosemary once again back on NXT. I love this rival or this uh, partnership with her and Wendy Cho. Uh, as they were in action. Uh, but we got to talk about the end of the night, the contract signing between Roxanne and Julia. But who what? showed up? There she is. Oh. Stephanie oh. Fakur staking her claim as the next challenger for the Women's Championship. Roxanne, you are girl. You got some trouble ahead of you. I'm just saying. It, like, yeah. Yeah. For like real. That, like a picture's worth a thousand words, right? Right. That shot in the bottom right of this slide. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like the future. Oh my god. The future so of the bright. women's division right there. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh I dude, I'm ready for it. I can't wait to see um uh, where we go from here. Uh, with that. And I'm excited to see Julia and Roxanne too, but uh yeah, it's crazy to think the end of an and era. I, I, I think Julia could beat her. Oh, I think Julia her. is going to beat her. Absolutely. It just like I think Trick Williams is going to beat uh, Ethan Page the, tomorrow night as well. That's the new a new era on the CW, man. So, and of course, we got A Town down under uh, doing a Grayson Waller effect as now they're going to challenge Axiom and Nathan Frazier for the tag titles because I don't know. Their good buddy CDC says reasons. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. When are, you, you know. When are you going to pull the damn plug on that already? I mean, Bree, poor Bree, you know? It's like, hopefully we can get her back to where they finally do this and she'll, I, like, her I, boy... I don't I don't know if she's recovered yet. Like, I don't like, think she has. She, I don't think we, it's going to happen until they finally pull that damn trigger, man. Yeah, we, we might we might want to send help her way. We might. We, prob we probably should, my friend. But once again, NXT was a solid show this past week, and we are so excited to see what's going to happen tomorrow night with their debut on the CW. And let's talk about Rampage from this past week. Now, this was not from Arthur Ashe Stadium, so yes, it was pre-taped, but uh, it wasn't a bad show, I didn't think. We got to see the return of uh, Anna Jay, um, which I think this was her first time back since uh, wrestling in Japan, right? I don't recall I do seeing her on television before. I do believe so, because they were make sure making a big deal about it. So Yeah, yeah, she uh, had a tremendous run there in stardom, so it's great to see her back so. and. uh uh, how House of Black going up against, um, uh, you know, pretty much just destroying um, Top Action Lee Andretti and Leo yeah, Rush. Leo Rush, yeah. yeah. Uh, we got to see the acclaim we're in action. Of course, that main event, Willow Nightingale going up against uh, um, Ty Falkyrie. Uh, always great to see Willow. Tremendous matchup. And Rampage, Rampage was, it was, it wasn't like a, didn't knock it out of the park for me, but it was a solid show. Nice well, little fun Friday yeah. night show. Yeah, it it was it was just okay, but let me sum it up for the good people at home. If you didn't watch Rampage, this slide right here sums it all up. House of Black go. kicked kicked Action Dreddy and Leo's butt. Takeshka uh, was in Takeshka was in action. Anna Jay was in action, and so was Willow versus Ty Valkyrie. Yeah. There you go. 
Well, it's that time of the show. Let's go to our good pre- friend, Sienna, as she has got some advice to give us all. Despite the negative, toxic, tribalistic behavior within the IWC, there's always the positive within the internet wrestling community. Now then, there's always good people out there that you can feel more freely talking about anything about wrestling versus like in the real world where like when we talk about what we're into wrestling, we tend to get questioned, picked on, make fun of, or being bullied by people that consider wrestling as F-A-K-E. And that is like a really not a very good feeling though. But with the power of social media, there is a lot of people out there like wrestling fans that share like similar interests with you too. Like can talk about like matches, wrestlers, like shows and whatnot as well. Whether y'all agree with it or have like a healthy like debate that y'all kind of like disagree about it. It's all about like sending like the energy and also like within the boundaries as well too but once you all establish like this friendship it can go for like days weeks months or a year until meeting that person for a very first time and that is like a true test of it as well too but with my experience of meeting different people like wrestling fans from all over it tends to be like a very good feeling and then sometimes you gotta set the wall up like okay this person's cool, but not my energy and whatnot, too. I mean, it's nothing wrong with it because it's like a pretty much at the end of the day, you just want to make sure like who you're actually like talking to, but also having like a really good tension to keep this friendship like a very long time, too. So therefore, like there's a lot of good people out there within the IWC. You just got to find the energy and the vibes, y'all. Oh, truer words could not be said, our friend. Thank you so much, Sienna. We appreciate it. And she is wise beyond her years, I say, if I do say so myself. Well, let's talk about TNA's impact from this past week, as this was a loaded show as we were on the road to Bound for Glory. Huge implications on this show. Uh, first off, how about the opener? We got to see Sol Ruka uh compete in uh tna as she teamed up with jordan grace to go against wendy chu and rosemary as they continuing on that war with them got to see the debut of the now lee young lee uh, uh make her debut in tna which i'm excited to see what they do with her because i thought she was one of uh, such a talented wrestler and like for her to finally like you know hopefully get like a decent run i really hope that's what's going to happen in uh tna um, we find find like a home and mm-hmm. just run with it. No kidding, right? Uh, what about Josh Alexander's this new faction he's got with Sinner and Saint? That's kind of interesting. I'm I'm curious to see what's going to happen from that. But by far the moment of the night, say his name, he will appear. We have a new number one contender for the TNA Championship. It is Joe Hendry. This is long overdue. We've been talking about this is the moment, folks, that you wait for moments like these, these these huge, huge monumental moments as we are now on that road to Bound for Glory. And, yes, it's going to be Joe Hendry as against uh, Nick Demuth. But also we found out this, too, this week, is it's going to be the Monsters Ball for the TNA Digital Media and uh, International Championship as PCO will defend against Matt Cardona and that continuing rival between them. But as we said before, the main event, your main event of Bound for Glory is for the TNA World Championship. I think this is it, B-Roll. I think this is the moment we've been clamoring for, it's, we've been waiting for. I think it's time. It's time for Joe Hendry let, to finally let, stake let his claim. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. If Joe Hendry does not win the title here and the strap does not go on him, I think the city of Detroit will burn to the ground. Yeah. I'm, it's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> it's like, I, we said that at Slam Anniversary, but seriously, this has got to be the moment, man. This, this, no is the disrespect moment. to Nick, Nick, Nick yeah. And he's had a great one, but I mean, but you uh, got, you got to put it on your hot hand, and there's no doubt about it. Joe Hendry's your hot hand, so man, I'm pumped for this. I am pumped for Bound for Glory, but this is kind of a, the road to Bound for Glory just got a little bit interesting, though. As they were supposed to have shows, these were the go home shows they were going to tape in uh, South Carolina this past weekend. They had to cancel them due to the storm. Now, at the time of the rec- this recording, we did find out some information. Is It does look like they will be hosting shows this week in Nashville. I believe it was Tuesday and Wednesday. 
And the cool thing is, all the all the profit, all the benefits from those shows will go towards relief for uh, all the victims there in South Carolina. So, uh, good job, TNA man. That's great to great to see that. Uh, and glad that they're going to get to do. We're going to get some TNA wrestling this week, and it's going to be interesting to see what them go home shows percent as we are on that road to bound for glory well it's here it finally happened the mr mcmahon documentary debuted earlier this week on netflix uh have you watched any of the episodes have um, you been, had a chance I'm, i am about three episodes deep i think i'm on like yeah. the fourth episode um, um yeah so I, I i was able to finish it like i wasn't like it was good. It was solid. It didn't like knock my socks off. It was kind of like most of the stuff we already knew. But you got to think about it this way, man. Like, there's so many people outside the wrestling world who don't know any of this crazy shit that Vince done throughout his life uh, in the WWF and then WWE. So, well, uh, uh, and for me too, like you know, being the new, someone yeah, who that's true, as someone who discovered wrestling, like. You know, because people want to share the good. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, I didn't really know a whole lot about like the steroid stuff, and yeah. Um, so that was well, well you do now. <laughs> that was interesting. So, but it's a, it's an interesting watch. Let's just put it that way. So, but it is now available and is on Netflix. And we got an update on Hikaleo, the former Hikaleo. Uh, as it looks like he will now be reporting to the NXT brand, which I think is smart. Uh, I think putting him on the main roster involved in the bloodline stuff, it would have been too soon. So and this is this guy, he is a talented dude, man. I mean, he had a I love the run he went on in the G1 there like a, a, a year ago. Um, yeah. And his partnership with El Fantasma was great. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do. And um, I mean, he's a huge dude. I mean, this guy's like seven foot. Like, he's but he's a dude. seven footer who can who can actually go. So, put him with Shawn Michaels, let him cook, and I'm sure he's going to end up being a monster in the WWE. And we also found out AJ Styles will be returning to SmackDown this Friday. Excited to get the phenomenal one back in a WWE ring. Uh, it's long overdue, so I'll just hope and pray that they changed his entrance music back. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, not a fan of it, the. Uh, it kind of seems like we were gonna get more of like a from the yeah. promo and how they presented on commentary, like a uh -huh. baby face styles again. Yes. Yeah. Is, I yeah. I agree. And this is huge news as we now have a date. Set the date, folks. October 25th. It is official. WrestleMania 41 tickets will go on sale for Las Vegas uh, and let the bidding wars begin because I'm sure this is going to be crazy and chaotic. Fingers crossed these prices aren't too fucking stupid where I got to get like a third mortgage or something. Uh, it's Vegas, baby. <laughs> but it's Vegas, baby. So, but the tickets do go on sale on October 25th. So be on the lookout for that. Well, my friend, there's always so much going on in the world of pro wrestling. And it's that time of the show where we need to talk about some GCW, some Game Changer Wrestling. And, of course, we've got to go to our resident expert in this field. Let's go to the Queen of Extreme, Carly, for a GCW report. What's going on, PW60 fam? I'm Kay Case Carly, your GCW bestie. And this week's going to be a little different since there was no events last week. I'm going to give you some news, as well as some match and appearance updates for shows upcoming. But let's start off with the news. It looks like Game Changer Wrestling and Zilla Fatu have parted ways. Now, there were some rumor into the beginning as to why things have went down, and I'll show you. Now, mind you, this was made apparent during the weekend of September 20th and 21st when they had the shows in Philadelphia and Connecticut, where he was supposed to uh, fight both nights, first night against Max Rima and the other night against Tony Deppin, but he was not going to be there. To which Game Changer Wrestling put up Zilla will not be appearing on tonight's GCW event in Philadelphia or any GCW shows in the foreseeable future. We tried our best to avoid the situation, but we have reached an impasse. The first rumor of reason was because GCW would not pay Zilla Fatu's rate as it had supposedly went up, but this was what Brett Lauderdale, the owner of GCW, had put up in his words. Now, mind you, this is only one side of the story, but 
Wrestlers with under 40 matches in their career should still be setting up rings, not demanding flights and hotels for their management and entourage. Young wrestlers, your reputation is everything. Be wise about who you surround yourself with. One chance to make a first impression. Which is super interesting because I've heard a lot of great things about Zilla Fatouz, so this seems really out of character. Again, this is only one side of the story. I haven't really heard anything from Zilla Fatouz's side. Anyway, on to the next piece of news. Megan Bain had a match with Matt Cardona during Back to Back, and it was a hell of a match. And she ended up pinning him for the second time in the row, the first time being at the G-Co during the six-man tag. Unfortunately, after her match, gosh, she looks great. Unfortunately, after her match, she ended up getting beat the shit out of by the whole Deathmatch royalty and got pretty badly injured. So, does this mean Megan Bain is out of the Art of War games for GCW Fight Club? Because if that's the case, then both teams are now 3-3, three and three, leaving an opponent to the mystery for both sides. And speaking of GCW Fight Club, Charles Mason, who was arrested the second night of GCW Homecoming this year for possession of an unalive weapon and of unaliving somebody, will be having a trial October 10th, which is only two days before GCW Fight Club. To me, with how much they're hyping this up, I can almost guarantee that we're going to be seeing this man come back during GCW Fight Club, and Richard Holiday better be worried. And we'll just continue on with GCW Fight Club because there are some matches that have been set in stone. Besides the Art of War Games match, as you see right above, we're also going to see Rina Yamashita put her GCW Ultra Violent Championship on the line against none other than the rogue, Brandon Kirk. We'll also be seeing Sydney Akeem take on Leon Slater, as well as we'll be seeing an appearance from Masha Slamovich. The weekend after that, Friday, October 18th, we'll be having GCW War Ready, where we're going to be having Orin Veidt going against Dr. Redacted, which you know that's going to be a death match. And we have a high-flying bout as Gringo Loco takes on Jack Evans. We'll also be seeing appearances from the GCW World Champion, Mance Warner, Megan Bain, Dulce Tormenta, which I believe will be fighting Brooke Havoc, as well as the Iron Slut herself, Dark Sheik. And the next day, Saturday, October 19th, we'll be having Blood in the Hills 3, where they'll be going back to the UCC in LA. One of the main matches listed is Sydney Air Akeem taking on Jack Evans, and you guys, I am super hyped for this match, as well as we're going to see Brooke Havoc, C4, Rina Yamashita, Vipress, Effie, and one half of ABC, Chris Bay. And during Halloween Day, we're going to have a GCW Monster Bash. We're going to have Ray Horace show up, which really shocked the hell out of me. We're also going to see the King of Strange Style, Arez, and Masha Slamovich. But also the match mentioned on card so far is Mike Bailey taking on Super Crazy. But yeah, you guys, that's pretty much what's all going down for the rest of October for Game Changer Wrestling, as well as some... Pretty major news that I wanted you to hear. And by the way, the one with Charles Mason is all kayfabe. There's no actual unaliving. There, everything's cool. It's just very interesting for Fight Club coming up. So that is all I have for you this week for Game Changer Wrestling. And if you haven't already, I hope after today you give GCW a chance because they're pretty awesome. Okay, thanks. Bye. Back to you guys. And you are pretty awesome, too, Carly. Thank you so much for that report. Uh, a lot going on in the world of Game Changer Wrestling, man. But also a lot going on in the world of wrestling. And we got to talk about this one because this damn near broke the internet. Yes, it's Shane O'Mac and the Young Bucks taking a picture together. What the hell is going on here, B-Roll? So, like, I want to put, like, a side-by-side -side of, like, Jack Perry with Drew McIntyre and this one. And be like, which one broke the internet more? Like, ah, yeah. So, well, I don't know. There's more and more signs pointing that Shane McMahon may be doing something with AEW on down the road. Who knows? Like they say in the world of professional wrestling, anything can happen. And how about this? I'm excited for this. MJF has officially been announced that he will be in the sequel to Happy Gilmore. That's right. Maxwell Jacob Freeman is going to be in Happy Gilmore. I've heard a lot of people talk about this. I'm hoping for the same thing. What if he's playing the son of Shooter McGavin? Like, how amazing would that be? 
Like, it, it, please. It would, it would be awesome. I just... I wonder. I hope it's true. Well, I do, I too. I do, too, buddy. And how about this, man? Talk about meetings like Kenny Omega meeting with Hiroshi Tanahashi. Of course, interesting, because this is in Japan, you know, and it's like the last time these two were next to each other, it was like a, uh, what was it, Wrestle Kingdom... I forget the number, but it was where they met in the main event and Tanahashi beat yeah. Omega. Yeah, it was. It's interesting. Kind of like a reunion of sorts. Yeah, there's some rumors going around that, in fact, Kenny Omega may be making his triumphant return to the world of pro wrestling, and it may very well happen as soon as Wrestle Dynasty. Could it be perhaps going in a matchup, return matchup against Tanahashi? Who knows? But we're going to find out soon enough. And hey, speaking of Japan, there's so much going on in Joshi Wrestling. And thank God we got an expert for that. So let's go to our good friend, the light skinned Gaijin, with a report on Joshi Wrestling. Oh, man, it's great to be back. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Gaijin Temple. And I do apologize, I have been gone for so long. My equipment's kind of outdated and I'm in the process of getting brand new equipment just so I can keep making videos like this, not just for my PW60 family, but for my own channel on Light Skin Gaijin. But with that said, let's talk a little Joshi, shall we? Stardom held an event at Cork and Hall this past Saturday. Kubara Sayaka defeated Sai Kamitani in a six-woman tag team match that also involved Natsuko Tora, Luaka, Tam Nakano and Saori Ano, in which the crowd erupted to some thunderous Kurara chants at the conclusion of this match. Tekla and Momo Watanabe would retain their Goddess of Stardom Championships against the team of Shori and Saki Kashima, and in a feature event, Mayu Iwatani would team up with Azumi to take on the team of Mina Shirakawa and Timeless Tony Storm, where Tony Storm picked up the victory. This match right here was a very good match, and it leads in very well to their future title match for the IWGP Women's Championship that'll be taking place on October 5th at Nagoya Golden Fight. Also in Joshi news, Mari Gold held the finals to its Dream Star Grand Prix, where in the finals we saw Utami Hayashishita going one-on-one -on -one with Mai Sakurai. You gotta love the progression of Mai Sakurai. She has been evolving extremely well. She's also one half of the Mari Gold Twin Star Champions alongside with Mirai. However, it would be Utami Hayashishita who would walk out as the inaugural winner of Mari Gold's Dream Star Grand Prix. She will be gifted an opportunity at Saray's Marty Gold World Championship later on this year. And honestly, if you want to go back and watch some of these incredible matches, sign up for Wrestle Universe right now. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me, but make sure you follow me on all of my socials. Make sure you're subscribed to PW60. And remember, Joshi Wrestling is for everyone. Oh, thank you so much, Light Skin. That's good to good to see you, buddy. Oh man, and hey, also uh, Tony Storm, she's going to be a busy gal. She's also uh, announced that she's going to be working some CMLL dates as well. So uh, that'll be interesting to see what happens. But this next story, B-roll, I've been waiting for this to happen for a long fucking time. Ding dong, the witch is dead. That's right. Bleacher oh, Report oh, is oh, fucking dead. That's right. Oh, finally. Oh, finally. No more pay-per-views. No more AEW. I can't think of how many times. Look at me. Look at me. How many times you fucked me over, Bleacher Report? How many times you took all my money? How many times like I got like god awful feeds? I had to buy pay-per-views multiple times just to see them. And now you're done for. And I'm happy for it. And I'm standing here tall and proud. And you know what? I'm gonna piss on your grave. Fuck you, Bleacher Report. Thank you, fuck you, bye. You know what's no. sad, though? You want to know what's sad? <laughs> Shadow's upset about this, too. Oh, yeah. Um, but apparently, like if, you, like, if you bought them, you know, you were able to, like, go back and rewatch them. You can't apparently, do it anymore? You, apparently, you lose access to that, too. Like, they're just gone. Well, it, I'm sorry. It's a sacrifice that needed to be done, so... 
I'm so glad Bleacher Report's done and over with. Now, this was very interesting. Uh, and we've talked about this last week, that Fox is, in fact, working out a deal with AEW, but old Swerve Strickland kind of let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, in an interview uh, where he pretty much just said, yeah, AEW is going to Fox. And, like, what do we think of this logo, too? Is this, like, the real logo? Is this a temporary logo? Because I'm kind of digging it. The Shockwave logo? See, I've, I've seen this logo, but, like, I've also seen it different colors. So. Yeah. I don't know. As <laughs> as someone who dabbles in the Photoshop, you know, eh, yeah. it's all right. You know, it, it's all I right. Like but it. I like it. I can dig it, but who knows? Yeah, who we knows? We shall see indeed. when we shall see. Um, we'll know when we know. Hopefully, we're going to get that deal out soon. I feel like we talk about that every week here on PW60. Well, I, honestly, I feel like these past two stories that we just talked about. Yeah, I think it's pretty much. Stones. Yeah, yeah, it's inevitable. It's just like, when are we making the announcement? So, but yeah. I'm sure we're going to find out soon. Now, this was a weird one. Uh, Anthony Bowens and Jose Canseco got into like a fight on like Twitter or X. Well, I guess like, they both did play baseball. Yeah. Hey, Bowens has got a mean swing, but, uh, you know, like uh, some back and forth between like Ho- Jose Canseco, though, is one of those guys. He can just like. He just needs to go away, go and go into his cave somewhere and just and just be done because he uh, I'm not a uh, no comment on Jose Canseco. But just like this coming out this week is just like completely, utterly random, random, very oh, random. Speaking of which, let's go to Brian with Brian's random moment of the week for PW60. Uh, 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 random moment of the week. That's my fancy introduction. Yeah, I'm wearing the glasses. Oh, I look like an analytical genius. Ha, 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 Or something like that. Hi, back again for Brian's random moment of the week. Here on P-Dub to the 60. And, of course, we've been talking about the What If series. And right now, the subject within a subject, you might say, about the What Ifs is wrestlers leaving companies. And what would have happened if they would not have left certain companies at certain times? And I've been talking about members of the NWO for the last several weeks. Um, So one more that I want to think about was a member of the NWO, one of the first few members, then was kicked out, then rejoined in like 1999, I believe, then left WCW late 1998, early 1999 to go to the WWF to become... The Big Show, and I'm talking about The Giant. So, quite simply, what would have happened, or what if, The Giant didn't leave WCW? What if he never went to the WWF, at least at that time, and would have stayed with WCW, let's say, hypothetically, up until the close in 2001, then obviously could have went over to the WWF and been a major attraction there as well? What do you think? So, what if The Giant never left WCW. Uh, How do you think the rest of his WCW career would have went? Comment below and let us all know. And enjoy the rest of your PW60, and i got to throw in a little little promotion as well over on the Next Level app coming up in October. A great place, a great hub for sports and for pro wrestling. We've got a contest coming up, and I want you to check it out. It's going to be Are You Smarter Than a Next Level Content Creator? I'm one of those creators. It's wrestling trivia. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm going to win. So there you go. Have a great day. Oh, I love me a, like a plug of Palooza. You know that. Well, you guys should all check that out. We love you, Brian. And you know else we love here on PW60? We love our wrestling content creators. Now, this week, our creator of the week is not quite a wrestling content creator, but you'll understand once, uh, once you see her because our creator of the week is one uh, Kit Cassidy. Now, if you don't know her, she is actually the daughter of Scott Hall. And it's just so cool. Like, she has posted several videos, just like uh, of at-home videos of her and Scott Hall, her dad. Uh, it, it's just, it's cool to see. And God bless her. Like, you shared your dad with us for so many years just as, as a great and one of the great professional wrestlers. And the fact that, like, you're, you're sharing this footage with us as well, it's just, it's really cool to see. So we had to highlight her. Uh, if you're not following her, go give her a follow because our Ruby Ringside uh, content creator of the week this week is one kick 
Cassidy. And our last story, oh boy, it's finally happening, B-Roll. Here we go. It looks like SummerSlam has officially went ahead and moved to two nights as it will take place next year as it will come to you from the MetLife Stadium in New York, New Jersey, which has hosted a couple WrestleManias in the past, and now they're going to get their first SummerSlam two nights. What do you think of this? Are you excited? Didn't they host that infamous forever long wrestlemania oh dear god yeah wrestlemania 35 yeah let's let's but then they're not gonna have to worry about them for SummerSlam though because we're getting two nights two nights two nights not one but two but you know what um lights shine bright in the city of new york or is this yeah. technically jersey or because um, like uh I'm coming home. I'm... Oh, God, that's a Diddy song. Never mind. No, 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 no. I take it back. No, 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 no. no don't, that's don't... not a Diddy song, is it? Uh, yeah, it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Well, anyways, nonetheless. Leave a comment and let us know. <laughs> but after this week's episode of Pro Wrestling 60, we got a big week ahead because we've got NXT debuting on the CW this week. We've also got a huge SmackDown, a huge Raw. And Bad Blood this Saturday. And the fallout from Grand Sam and AEW as we're on the road to Wrestle Dream and so much more. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll see you next time on another episode of PW60. Everybody have a great week. Bye. Bye.